ask you all please to switch mobile phones to silent or to off. And uh, members of the public, I say that as a committee we understand that the matters under consideration tonight can be emotive. Please be respectful of those around you in the public gallery and the committee and refrain from booing, cheering, or any other form of uh, disturbance. Moving on to the business of, on the agenda, item number one. The minutes of the meeting took place on the 23rd of November 2016 have been on the table for the last 30 minutes. Are you content that I sign those as a correct record of that meeting? Thank you. Gary, apologies for absence. Thank you, Chairman. We've received apologies for absence from Councillors Simon Inchbold, Libby Piper and Jed Hall. Thank you very much. And further, um, declarations of interest, Gary. Yes, uh, so we received a declaration of pecuniary interest from yourself, uh, Councillor Isherwood, in relation to item A2, WA 2016-1823. And as a result, you will therefore be leaving the Chamber during consideration of that item. And Councillor Cal Coburn will take over as Chairman. Thank you. Any other declarations? Councillor Edwards. Yes, I, I'm on the um, Hazemere Town Council Planning Committee. Um, but That's noted. Thank you very much indeed. Well. And Councillor Round as well. Thank you. Uh, Gary, have there been any questions from members of the public? There's been none received, Chairman. Right. Just, I uh, should have done it a little earlier. Can I just introduce the officers in front of me? Joanna Ayres. Uh, legal member, Elizabeth Sims, the head of planning, Louise Yandel, the uh, senior planning officer for southern and western areas, and Ryan Snow, the uh, senior planning officer as well, also responsible for this uh, southern area. Moving on, uh, Elizabeth Sims, are there any relevant updates to government guidance? None not to this meeting. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. Moving on to uh, application for planning commission permission. Can I just remind members that uh, if you have a request for a site visit, please put it in as early as possible um, before the agenda um, is uh, published. Uh, but even after the agenda is published, we accept request for site visits in plenty of time. You've normally got a week to do that, so could I ask that we submit to the officers requests for site plannings earlier. Moving on to item A1, WA 2016-2098, uh, Robinswood 3, Brayside Close, Hazelmere, GU 27-1JS, and Louise Yandel is going to introduce this application to the committee. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this is an application for the erection of extensions and alterations to the existing bungalow to provide a two-storey dwelling and the erection of a double garage following the demolition of the existing garage. The site is located on the eastern side of Brayside Close, a cul-de-sac which is located off of the avenue in Hazelmere. The site is currently occupied by a detached bungalow and land levels rise steeply to the east, and the dwelling is located at a higher land level than the road. The dwelling is set into the hillside. There is a detached garage set forward at the house at a lower land level. The surrounding area is residential in character, and the adjoining properties on Brayside Close are bungalows, also set into the hillside. This photograph shows the front of the application property. As you can see here, the dwelling is located at the higher land level than the road and the garage at the lower land level than the house towards the northern boundary of the site, which is about here. Um, this photograph shows the existing access to the site along Brayside Close and the turning circle which exists in front of the garage. This top photograph here shows the rear elevation of the property and this bottom photograph here is taken from the patio area to the rear of the property, looking towards the rear boundary. As you can see, land levels rise, rise steeply to the rear, 
and the top of the fence is located approximately six metres above the land level of the patio to the rear of the property. These photographs show the southern boundary um, with, the, with two brayside close visible here just above the fence. These photographs show the existing decking which is situated above the existing garage in front of the house. These photographs are both taken from the front of the house looking west um, and here you can see Bray Cottage in the photographs here. This final photograph is taken, oh sorry, um, this photograph shows the street scene with three Brayside Close on the left hand side of the photo and the adjoining property at two Brayside Close on the right here. And this final photograph is taken from across the valley in Cherry Tree Avenue. Um, the property is obscured by landscaping but is partially visible above Bray Cottage here. And you can see the properties to the rear of the site which back onto the boundary here, which are also partially visible through the trees. Um, this is a block plan of the site. Um, the proposal includes the demolition of the existing garage, which is located here, and its replacement with a double garage with decking above it. The garage would be located on the northern boundary in a similar position to the existing garage, and views from the decking would be similar to that existing of the road and the turning area and towards the front curtilage and parking area of five Brayside Close, the boundary of which is currently screened with planting. As you can see, the garage would not encroach any further into the turning area than the existing garage, which is shown by the dotted line here. In addition, a porch is proposed to the main dwelling and a first floor is proposed above the footprint of the existing dwelling with front and rear facing dormers. Clear glazed windows in the front elevation would look onto the road um, above the property at Brayside Close, which is um, at significantly lower drop in land levels, and at the rear, the dormers would look onto the boundary fence um, due to the rise in land levels at the rear. The garage would have a depth of 6.4 metres and a width of 7.4 metres, which is there, and the porch would be positioned to the front of the property in this location here and that would have a depth of 1.3 metres and a width of 2.4 metres. And the first floor would be entirely situated above the existing footprint of the building. This side shows the proposed elevations. The building would have a total height of 6.5 metres with a gable feature and dormers in the front elevation and dormers in the rear elevation. As you can see from the street scene, this property would have a greater height than the adjoining properties. However, taking into consideration the separation distances between the property and the adjoining properties, and the mixture of properties in the surrounding locality, officers consider that this would be acceptable. Furthermore, from wider views, as the property is seen against the backdrop of the hillside with different sizes and heights of properties, this relationship is considered acceptable. In conclusion, officers consider that the extensions and additions would appear acceptable and there would be no harmful impacts on the amenities of adjoining occupiers. The matters of principle and technical opinion are the principle of development, access and parking, biodiversity and the impact on the SPAs. The matters for members' judgment are the impact on visual amenity and the impact on residential amenity. If I can also draw members' attention to the update sheet. Um, this outlines a couple of updates to the report Firstly, in relation to the update to the stage that the local plan is at, um, a couple of further amendments to the report, and an amendment to condition number one to reflect an amended plan that has been received. Thank you, Chairman. Louise, thank you very much indeed for that. This is a public speaking item, and I call on uh, uh, the opponent, Mr. Wigg. Mr. Wigg arrived? No, he hasn't. Mrs. Wigg, I do beg your pardon. Have you explained the system? No. Could you, Carol, that's very kind.
Right, Mrs. Wig, you've got four minutes. Uh, carry on. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Coralie Wig. I'm the owner of Two Brayside Close. I'm here tonight speaking on behalf of myself and the balance of the occupants of the close, all of whom are represented here this evening. Firstly, I'd like to describe the character of the close to you and then highlight our five key objections against the potential impact of the proposed development upon it. Brayside Close is a charming and tranquil area. It consists of a narrow single track driveway that climbs steeply from the mini roundabout at the intersection of the avenue and Lion Lane. There are four secluded bungalows nestling in the trees located along it. Our concern is the precedent that will be set by allowing the development of number three and thus allowing the redevelopment of the rest of the street. Over time, none of the houses will be bungalows. Number one, overbearing. The proposed development with two storeys is not in keeping with the character of the close. It is overbearing and looks out of scale compared to the existing dwellings. The other properties will no longer enjoy their current seclusion. Nothing has really changed from the original planning application. The first floor plan will almost double in size. Well, the floor size plan will almost double albeit that the surveyor has made the effort to give it some character by clipping the corners of the roof and introducing gable windows. It's still not equate to a chalet bungalow. It is a two-story house. It will go from a three-bed, one-and-a-half bath bungalow to a five-bed, four-bath bungalow house. Number two, the overlooking. We are concerned that properties two and one will be overlooked by a wall of French windows encouraging the occupants to spend their time on the side terrace overlooking the front gardens of both houses. We will also be overlooked by the upstairs window by virtue of the fact that the house is at an angle to our properties. Number three, traffic and parking. The number of occupants of such a property will bring with them a significantly increased volume of traffic and parking to a close that is already busy, both now and in the future, with new owners. The precedent that this will set, not only for this house, but for the other three houses, will mean that the traffic and parking will eventually become untenable for the close. Number four, sewers. I understand that this point has been refuted as not relevant in the planning report. However, I do want to be clear that the existing sewer is unusual in that it is a common sewer to numbers three, two, and one. Before it goes to the main sewer in the road, it empties directly from number three to two to one, and then into the road. If the planners do accept the application, we would request that they stipulate a separate spur line to the road for number three. Number five, the construction of the road. This is a two to three inch of asphalt over three to four inches of hardcore base, which is inadequate for HGV traffic. It was inadequate during the last construction period and the sewers collapsed. If the application is allowed, we would request a CCTV of the main sewer line before and after and that the applicant is responsible for sewers. In summary, we strongly object to development of number three in the form in which it is currently presented. We are very concerned about the precedent that it may set for the close. Already we have been advised this development will imp impact negatively on the value of the neighbouring properties and have been encouraged, if it goes ahead, to look to do the same in order to maintain our investment. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. If you just hit the big button to switch the microphone off, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Now turn to uh, Ian G. Speak. Ms. G, you have four minutes whenever you start.
the big button. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and councillors. Just to, uh, by way of introduction, my name's Ian G. I am the freeholder of uh, Brayside Close. Uh, it's my sole residential dwelling and property, and I've lived in the property for 15 years. I'm not a home worker. I do not run a business from the property, and nor do I intend to. I've raised a family of two children at the property. Uh, I now have one daughter who lives with us at home and one son who left the property three years ago to study at university. I appreciate and I, the opportunity to speak to the council this evening. Um, I have a very short amount of time, so I'll keep my points concise. I wish to speak on four matters. The first of these is the background and the approach to consultation which I've taken. Some of the consultation feedback may give the impression that uh, there's been a lack of consultation, but I want to give a little bit of background as to the efforts that I've taken to ensure uh, my neighbours are informed and part of a consultative process that I've undertaken when developing these proposals. I've sought through pre-application advice uh, as to the principle of the development with WBC. I've also taken the opportunity to speak to my neighbours and ask them whether they would like to discuss the proposals with my professional advisor who's acting and developing the scheme on my behalf. I did this because I felt it would be a way of providing a neutral party as an intermediary, recognising there have been some difficulties in relationships in the close. Uh, my advisor has gone to great efforts in providing information as my plans have developed, and these have been uh, fully furnished and meetings have taken place um, at various properties uh, over the period of my application. I would add that uh, having had the pre-application um, uh, advice, having submitted a first planning application and received consultation feedback, the application was withdrawn on the basis of the concerns of the first application, modified, reduced in size, scope, uh, different roof details and through the addition of a double garage to a, a directly address the concern that was expressed by uh, one neighbour in particular as part of the consultation process. Following the second planning application, all efforts by my professional advisor to engage with the neighbours have been disregarded. Two other points relate to the provision of parking and provision of turning, which I fear there has been some misunderstanding during the application process. Uh, as has correctly been pointed out in the uh, summary report by the planning officer, the inclusion of a garage at the request of, of my neighbours has increased both the parking space to between five and six units and also provided a greater turning head for people who wish to use uh, the turning uh, head in my property to turn vehicles. Finally, I'd just like to comment that on the suggestion of the, uh, my local town councillor. I have spoken to some of the neighbours who have chosen not to respond to the consultation, the formal consultation process. I've spoken to two of the neighbours and they are, uh, were very comfortable with my proposals and indeed one has written to uh, that as a letter of support to WBC. So I'd really like to conclude by just explaining that um, uh, the, the, the application is supported. Uh, I believe I've done the right and honourable thing in engaging the neighbours throughout the whole process. And as to the material matters, I think they've been dealt with very satisfactorily and professionally by the professional planning case officer involved. And that's all I would wish to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, uh, Mr G. Members, turn to you. Councillor Edwards. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I know this site quite well, actually. Um, I've been up there on a number of occasions delivering political leaflets, as is my want. Um, and it is a very, very tight um, close. And uh, I was up there in the last few days and there are cars and uh, vehicles parked on the uh, entrance road and on the road itself. And I don't think the garage has been used at this current property. I think what would be helpful here is to uh, have a formal site visit 
just to have a look at it in depth and to see exactly what it means to the, the, the surrounding area because it, it, it does look um, very large indeed, uh, a massive increase in, in, in the size of the property and I think it will help us all if we could um, get up there and have a look and see what's going on. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So we have a proposal for a site visit. Do we have a seconder? Councillor King. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I entirely agree with Councillor Edwards. Uh, it, it, you need to go and visit this site to actually get a perspective of the scale that we're talking about. I totally support it. And we couldn't have asked for a site visit earlier because the offices were closed for Christmas. Uh, I think the uh, report was... Uh, <laughs> The local member did ask for this to come to committee, so uh, that was quite some time ago, uh, early in December, and uh, certainly the report reached us on the 17th of uh, December. Um, that's a fact. So, members, we have a proposal for a site visit. Those in favour, please show. That's one, two, three, four, five. Those against? That's two. That motion is carried. Abstentions. 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 One. One. The site visit will take place on Tuesday, the 31st of January 2017, at 10 o'clock in the morning, if that is agreeable with all. 10 o'clock? Thank you very much indeed. So we. We defer to that site meeting and we return to the meeting and I think that's sorry Councillor Round uh, thank you Mr Chairman this is in order for, uh, I don't know if agreement for a site visit closes discussion on this issue because I have a question a technical question am I allowed to ask it that's it so okay please raise your comments with the officers uh, indeed right with that I uh, We'll hand it over to uh, Councillor Carol Coburn. Don't worry, just take your time. <laughs> no, no, it's no problem at all. Right, moving on then to uh, item A2, WA 2016-1823, uh, land at Montana Church Road, Hindhead. And Ryan, would you like to introduce this, please? Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, planning permission in this case is sought for the erection of three dwellings and associated works. We'll start with the location plan. The application site comprises an existing two-storey detached property and its associated garden area. The site is accessed of a private road on the northern side of Church Road. The surrounding area is predominantly residential in character. The, aer the aerial photograph demonstrates the existing building of Montana there in the centre of the, the red application site, its garden access and turning area. We'll start with the top left photograph which shows the existing access and turning area with substantial vegetation around the shared boundary of the application site. The bottom left photograph shows the existing access lane to the site and the nearest neighbouring property of Mulberry House. The top right photograph shows the existing property of Montana taken from its rear amenity area uh, which would be retained as part of the proposal. The bottom left photograph shows the existing rear amenity space which would largely be retained as part of the proposal. The top left photograph here shows the northeast section of the site where units one and two would be situated along with their associated garages. The bottom left photograph shows the northern section of the site where unit two would be situated. The top right photograph shows the section of the site where unit three would be located adjacent to the rear amenity space of Montana. 
and the bottom right photograph shows where Unit 1 would be situated with its associated garage being located the, to the right-hand side of that photograph. Here we have the block plan, uh, which demonstrates the layout of the scheme. Unit 1 would be situated in the southeastern corner of the site, Unit 2 would be situated in the northeast corner of the site, and Unit 3 would be situated in the northwestern corner of the site. <coughs> Here we have the proposed elevations for Unit 1 and 2. Units 1 and 2 would have a maximum width of 16 metres, a maximum depth of 17 metres, and a maximum height of 7.7 .7 metres. Here again are the proposed elevations for Units 1 and 2. Here we have the proposed elevations for Unit 3. Unit 3 would have a maximum width of 18 metres, a maximum depth of 17.5 metres, which would be 24 metres including the attached garage and a maximum height of 10.2 metres. Again, we have the proposed elevations for Unit 3 here as well. Here we have the proposed floor plans for Units 1 and 2, which demonstrate the size of the rooms meets the internal space standards. Again, we have the proposed floor plans for Units 3, which also demonstrate that the size of the rooms would meet the internal space standards. Here uh, we demonstrate the difference between the site layout of the previous application, WA 2015-02 on the left, and um, the current application, which is before you currently. Here we can see uh, on the left, sorry, that um, it was proposed to erect five detached five dwellings. This was refused by the council and later dismissed at appeal. The differences between the current proposal and that application are the number that the number of dwellings have been reduced from five five bedroom dwellings, including the demolition of the existing dwelling at Montana, to three two uh, three bedroom dwellings and one five bedroom dwelling, with the retention of the existing dwelling at Montana. This slide demonstrates the proposed site density and the density of the surrounding development. As you can see, the current proposal would result in a density of 7.9 dwellings per hectare. As you can see there in red, that's the application site. To the south, shown in orange, uh, the density is 6.02 dwellings per hectare. To the west of the application site is a residential close of Hillgarth, which features a density of 5.68 dwellings per hectare. Whilst the proposal would result in a slightly higher density than the surrounding development, officers consider that the distances between the built form and the boundaries, together with the landscaping, would reflect the character of the wider area. In conclusion, the proposal is within the developed area of Hindhead and is considered a suitable location for the provision of new housing. It would be acceptable in terms of design and impact on surrounding neighbours. The matter, matters of principle and technical opinion are the principle of development, planning history and the difference with previous proposals, uh, housing, land supply, impact on trees, high, highways and parking, the effects on the SPAs, financial considerations and biodiversity, the matters of judgment, a design and impact on visual amenity, standard of accommodation and the provision of amenity space and the, and the impact on residential amenity. If I could draw members' attention to the update sheet and ask that they note the two amendments on page 35 of the agenda report. The amendments on page 38 and 52 of the agenda report and finally the amendment on page 53 of the agenda report. Please also note the amendment to condition 4 on page 55 of the agenda report. In addition to the written update, officers would also like to rec recommend an additional condition be attached, um, which would read, prior to the occupation of the development, boundary treatment shall be implemented in accordance with a scheme to be submitted to and approved by the local planning authority. Notwithstanding the provisions of the Town and Country Planning General Permitted Development Order 2015 or any order revoking or reenacting that order with or without modification, no fencing or walls shall be erected on any boundary without the written permission of the Local Planning Authority. Thank you, Chairman. Right, thank you, Ryan. This is also a, a matter for public speaking, and could I invite Mr Loy, first of all, please, to speak? Uh, 
Dear councillors and officers, uh, thank you for your time in allowing me to speak tonight. My wife and I and our baby daughter and dog own Mulberry House, which resides directly next to Montana and the propo proposed development. I object to the proposal and also represent the owners of Littledale and Pine Ridge, who also use the access track, and they are also here tonight. The development comprising four substantial properties in total, all with double garages on this plot, is a significant overdevelopment of the land and is not in keeping with the local area. The area is not comprised of such high density housing and it is likely to change its character. There are no other plots in the local area home to such a, such a number of substantial dwellings. There has been several planning applications on neighbouring land in recent years using the same access track that have been consistently rejected by the WBC. These were also objected to by all the neighbours, including the current applicant, for the same reasons cited in objections to this development. There are references in my original letter that you will note. Safe access. Local plan policy requires all developments to provide safe access. I respectfully request the committee give this point serious attention. The access is a single lane pothole ridded dirt track access from the A287. As you know, the 287 is a busy road. While physically two cars could sit side by side at the entrance, two cars cannot enter and exit at the same time safely in normal traffic conditions. Visibility is also limited to the left when exiting. Four, four properties currently use the access, and while extreme care is required, it is manageable at this flow level. The development near enough doubles this. Each property has a double garage plan. Each household is a minimum two-car family. Considering commuti uh, commuting, school and nursery runs, dog walks, domestic and social visits, local authority vehicles and deliveries, you are likely to see 100 plus movements a day at this access point. This level of flow is unsafe at the access point and should be given serious consideration. I think a site visit would be sensible here. There are also no passing opportunities along the track that is 105 metres in length. Recently, two fire engines were, were called to Montana, which completely blocked the access. What happens if I need access in, in an emergency for my baby daughter? What happens if other emergency vehicles require access at the same time? The fire engines had to reverse out, and this took them several attempts. Garbage trucks have to reverse in with no safe turning. How would heavy machinery required for construction use this safely? There are also drainage pipes which are shallow in nature along the track and raise drain covers. There is significant risk that heavy machinery would cause damage to these and dramatically increase the surface water flood risk. Noise. My wife runs her business from home and we also have a newborn. Three additional substantial properties in such close proximity will increase noise and light pollution. This, occupied with sorry, this coupled with increased traffic generation along the access track adjacent to our house will result in a significant increase in noise and disturbance, which will have a detrimental effect to our quality of life. This has potential economic and mental health ramifications. In conclusion, I request that the committee rejects the proposed development based on these points and remains consistent with the previous rejection precedent set in similar earlier applications. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Loy. Can I now invite the supporter, Mr. Bateson, to uh, come and speak? I think you've probably got the hang of it by now, but four minutes from when you start speaking. <laughs> Good evening, Chairman and Members. My name is Andrew Bateson, and I'm a professional planning consultant appearing here on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. Law, the owner applicants. As you will see from the committee papers, the S application is a revised submission following dismissal of an earlier scheme by Carla Holmes for five dwellings on the plot. Whilst the principle of accommodating more than just a single dwelling on this site has never been argued, officers and the last appeal inspector both made it clear that no more than four houses should be accommodated on this site. Despite some concerns raised by the Town Council and a few local residents regarding the driveway access from Church Road and the loss of a small number of trees, neither the County Highway Engineer nor the Borough Council's tree officer raised any concerns with the proposals. In fact, 
Both consultees were previously satisfied that the earlier scheme for five houses would have been acceptable in highway safety and arboricultural grounds. However, that earlier scheme was found to be unacceptable on other grounds by virtue of an overdevelopment of the site, causing detriment to the character and appearance of the locality, plus poor design, a lack of housing mix, and loss of some residential amenity by virtue of overlooking. This new proposal has reduced the total number of proposed houses on the site from five to four. And whereas the last scheme would have featured only large five-bed houses, this new proposal would see a retention of the existing four-bed cottage and the accommodation of just one five-bed plus two smaller three-bed houses. Having reduced the overall quantum and size of the houses, this new design allows a far more spacious layout and greater separation from the site's boundaries. That, in turn, also allows for retention of far more trees, including, including all those around the boundaries, which helps screen the site and ensure preservation of neighbouring residential amenities. As your officer report rightly points out on pages 43 to 54 of the committee papers, the provision of three additional houses on this underutilised site will make a far more efficient use of the land and it will help in a small way to meet the borough's housing needs. The proposed design and layout for the three new houses will be consistent with their surroundings and with the council's adopted design standards. By virtue of the spacious layout proposed and the retention of all boundary trees, residential amenities for all existing and proposed new residents will be maintained consistent with adopted policies and without causing overlooking, uh, overlooking or loss of light. The Arboricultural and Ecological Biodiversity reports that accompanied the application demonstrate that the three new houses could all be readily accommodated without causing harm. The highway engineer and the previous appeal inspector both concluded that the existing shared access drive onto Church Road was sufficient to safely accommodate the increased traffic generated by just three additional dwellings, and ample space exists on site to satisfy the additional parking needs. It is also universally agreed that the development would have no harmful impact upon the nearby Wildon Heaths or East Hants SPAs. In light of all that evidence, I urge this committee to concur with your officer's recommendation and resolve to grant planning permission for this application, subject to the various conditions and informatives and the, as amended with your core agenda. One final point I would like to thank on behalf of my clients, uh, the positive and proactive approach of officers in dealing with this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Bateson. Just before I throw it open to members, could I just clarify, Ryan, the extra condition? Has it got a number and is it a totally new? We've got an amended condition four and this is a totally new condition 19, is it? Or Right, that's fine. Yes, that's right, Chairman. And could you just remind us of the words of it? I don't know whether Gary took it down quickly. I just didn't get enough of it down. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I'll... Uh... I'll repeat the, uh, the, the additional condition. Um, so prior to the occupation of the development, boundary treatment shall be implemented in accordance with the scheme to be submitted to and approved by the local planning authority. Notwithstanding the provisions of the Town and Country Planning General Permitted Development Order 2015, or any order revoking or reenacting that order with or without modification, no fencing or walls shall be erected on any boundary without the written permission of the local planning authority. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Ryan. Yes, I just wanted that clarified. I don't know. Everybody else had quite taken it in. Uh, right, over to you, members. Sorry for that. Councillor King. Thank you very much, Chairman. Mine's just, I'd like to clarify the um, page 42 of the report, the proposed block plan differs from the one up there. And I'd be really grateful if Ryan could please explain whether he's got two plans on top of each other or what. I'm not quite sure. Thank you, Councillor. Um, yeah, the one you have on your screen there just has the overlay of the 2015 scheme that was uh, refused. Yep, yeah, and went to appeal. So. 
that's how they differ. Thank you. Councillor Mulliner. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I've actually had a quick look at the site, and it seems to me that we've had pretty clear indications from the previous planning history that some extra development would be acceptable with the 2005 application for one extra house being granted, and the density would be below the surrounding density at that level. Uh, putting a total of five on the site was felt to be too high, and one can understand why. And I think the only problem with this is that by retaining Montana as it stands, I don't think the spacing and density of the four proposed, the three new and the existing, is much different from that which the inspector found to be too dense. I think if what had come forward was two houses on that site, I could see how they could easily be accommodated in addition to Montana. And conceivably, if you didn't have Montana, though I appreciate that it's got huge implications for the cost of the operation, four houses spread out might possibly work. But obviously we have to look at what's in front of us, and my feeling is that although I heard what the officers have to say, it just still looks a bit cramped. And I note that the density, as uh, Ryan Snow pointed out, is just about eight per hectare, which I think in the context of sur the surrounding area, is quite an uplift. If you only had two extra ones, you'd be right within the band. And that's why if we had an application for two houses, I think I'd be supporting the officers very cheerfully. But I feel that um, at this stage, it's just still too dense. The gaps between numbers one and two are much smaller than anywhere else, really. I think there may be one other pair of houses with that, but it's not in keeping with the area. And in fact, the gap between Montana and three is not all that great. If you look at the underlying mauve um, arrangements, um, Montana or the house near Montana was much further away than the others. So I can sympathize with the applicant's wishes, but by keeping Montana in effect, you have a large area of garden which doesn't contribute to the development. It means all the other three are rather squashed up. So at the moment, so to what I hear from others, I'm not inclined to go with the officers on this one. Thank you. Councillor Round. Can I say here, here to that? Councillor Mellner takes the words out of my mouth. I entirely agree with ev almost every word he said. I was thinking of making exactly the same points. It does seem a pity. If you just move Montana a few yards, it would be better. Thank you. Oh, I have to bring it to a conclusion. Councillor Head. Thank you. Um, I feel odd to speak as the ward member, but uh, I'd like to echo my fellow members here by saying that this is uh, clearly a case of overdevelopment which doesn't enhance the, the nature of this site at all or the, the, the surrounding area. Um, so clearly overdevelopment, and I, I, I think the issue of the access is, uh, is also um, extremely significant here. Thank you. I won't, and I won't be supporting it. Thank you. Just be careful with the access because I think the inspector's previous report did, had no problems with it, nor did Surrey. But I, we can certainly raise it. Councillor, Councillor Adams. This is a different aspect to the access. Um, bearing in mind that there are three other houses already using it, um, how will that access be maintained under this plan? Uh, who is responsible for uh, keeping it up, you know, keeping it up to roadworthy condition? Um, it's a private driveway, so it would be the resident's responsibility to upkeep that driveway. So should we not have a condition which uh, requires any new residents to uh, fund have an agreement? Uh, agreement? Um, it would need to be a private arrangement between the developer and the owners of that driveway um, who would be the other residents. I think we should see that agreement before we give it our approval. I, living on a private road, I didn't think that was remotely possible. It is very much a private agreement after the event, but I'm sure the law legal advisor can help us out. It's essentially something that would be dealt with if, if there were to be such an agreement, it would be dealt with in the deeds of the property. And so when that site was then when the title was split and those individual sites were sold off, you'd have covenants for maintenance and upkeep 
in theory, that's what would happen. It's not something that we as a planning authority would enforce and certainly not by way of condition. Um, and I doubt very much that we could force them to, to come up to a, a legal agreement that we had any input into as part of the planning commission. It would be done when the properties were sold off by way through the, through the land registry. If the other three houses in Montana already have in their deeds that the four of them have equally to um, maintain that road, then it's clearly unfair uh, because, as you say, the deeds of the other three houses are all already cover that issue. Well, suddenly there would be three more. Maybe I'm fair, Councillor Adams, but I feel it's out with our remit. Um, you know, these things happen, as I say, we're all on private, a lot of us live on private roads, and so we have to accommodate. Uh, Councillor Munnan. Just as a matter of information for the commission officers, I gather from the applicant that he owns the road. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I entirely agree with the legal position that it's not something we can actually um, force things to, to happen. Councillor King. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, Chairman. I have to say I do share my colleagues' views about this site being a bit cramped. When you look at it, we're going to be introducing potential for 22 more residents plus the residents of Montana. And I... I seriously doubt there is enough amenity space there to cope with that number of people. And I'm really not happy about it. So I think it looks like it's overdevelopment and, and being shoehorned in. It's domineering and it's out of keeping with the area. So I'm sorry I can't support this. Unless the officers would like to add something, I think we could move to the recommendation. I have a feeling I know where it's going. In which case, then, I'll move to the revised recommendation that subject to conditions 1 to 3, 5 to 19 now, that includes the new one on boundary treatment uh, and no fencing or walls uh, without written permission, informatives 1 to 6 are set out on the report, and the amended condition 4, which is on your update sheet, uh, permission be granted. Can I see all those in favour of granting permission, please? That's a zero. <laughs> and those against uh, granting planning permission? That's unanimous at six. In which case, I need an alternative recommendation, please. Do you want to come back in, Ryan? I think, to be honest, a, a, an awful lot of what was said before is, is valid. And I think by reason of its cramped and crowded layout, excessive bulk, uh, the provision of insufficient space for landscaping, which I still believe is true, would result in the overdevelopment of the site, which was out of character with the surrounding area and failed to make a positive contribution to the appearance of the area. Contrary to policies D1 and D4 of the local plan and the Hazelmere design statement. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor King. It seems pretty comprehensive. Uh, does anybody wish to add anything else to that, or would the officers like to comment on what um, Councillor King has put forward? No, that sounds that sounds like something that we would recommend. So I'll put. Are you sure, officers? Yes, I'll put the old uh, alternative. Has somebody got a form of, of words for that apart from Councillor King's, or are we just going to lift it wholesale from the uh, the previous? decision chairman as louise has said if that is members conclusion and since it does fully reflect the previous reason for refusal we're, we're happy with that reason all right can you just refer me to the page councillor king so sorry chairman it's page 39 paragraph one which i believe is the the, the actual real reason that we all appear to be not right. supporting this Thank you, Councillor King. Now, I just wanted to make sure we knew why we were refusing it so that we can see uh, exactly what we're doing. So, yes, there it is on page 39, the first paragraph. So, um, the alternative recommendation is that this uh, application be refused uh, for the reasons as set out in that opening paragraph on page 39 of the officer's report, the previous um, refusal. Can I see all those in favour, please, of that refusal? And that's unanimous, that's six. Thank you very much, and we'll go and... Shall I go and get him? Are you going to get him? We'll recall the chairman before we move on to B1. Thank you very much indeed.
Right. Moving on then, members, to uh, item B1WA 2016-2152, Squirrels, Hale House Lane Church, GU 10 to JQ. Louise, it's all yours to introduce, Thank you, please. Chairman. Um, this application is for the construction of a dormer window. The site is located on the southern side of Hale House Lane. Um, it's currently occupied by a detached property and the surrounding area is rural in character. These photographs both show the front of the application property. As you can see, there are already two dormers in the front elevation. The area to the, to the right of the photograph, so this area here, is a side extension to the original property which was located there. Um, this photograph shows the front of the property from Howe House Lane. As you can see, the dwelling is largely screened by landscaping, but is partially visible through the driveway access. The proposal is for the addition of a dormer window in the front elevation marked on the plan here. Um, members should note that there is a listed building, um, Howe House, which is located to the west of the site here, um, officers consider that the proposal would not harm this heritage asset due to the separation distances. The proposed dormer extension would match the two existing dormer extensions in design. Um, members should also note that the property has previously been extended by 70% above the original dwelling. And whilst the dormer would only result in a minor ad additional increase, in combination with the existing extensions, it is considered to result in, dis in a disproportionate addition to the existing dwelling and as such would constitute inappropriate greenbelt development. However, officers consider that the minor scale of the scheme, which would not harm the open character of the greenbelt, along with the substantial improvement to the visual appearance of the dwelling, would be sufficient to constitute sufficient very special circumstances to warrant refusal of the application and to outweigh the harm to the greenbelt. So in conclusion, officers consider that the very special circumstances would outweigh the harm to the greenbelt, and furthermore, the impact on visual amenity and the surrounding landscape would be acceptable and there would be no harmful impact to any adjoining occupiers. The matters of principle and technical opinion are the principle of development, the impact on the setting of the listed building, the impact on the SPAs and SAC and biodiversity, and the matters for members' judgment are the impact on the green belt and very special circumstances, the impact on visual amenity and landscape character, and the impact on residential amenity. Can I also draw members' attention to the update sheet, which again outlines the update in relation to the local plan um, and also um, an amendment to the report. Thank you very much. Please, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I must say some of your words there was balance and attractive appearance. But I think it does everything to uh, this dwelling. And... Uh, I can't really say anything else. Uh, Councillor Mullen. With a question, um, exactly how much does this extend the floor area by? Um, that I don't know, unfortunately. Um, but as it's only a dorm room, it would only be a couple of square metres. Yes, I can't help feeling that um, de minimis provision should really come into this. Um, I, I think when you're doing that to, to something... Um, I'm surprised that that's, it's taken that seriously, and I shall remember that for future occasions. Um, but it, So if you have to use very special circumstances, which is this rather obscure phrase, which really means when you want to grant permission, this is your reason for doing it, um, then fine, because I think it actually improves things sig significantly, and it would be crazy not to support it. Councillor Coburn. Yes, I mean, this has only been brought to us because it's, you know, uh, the agent is a councillor. It's the sort of thing that would normally go through. And you're absolutely right, you know. I mean, you've only got to look at the picture to see that uh, it really is not going to do any harm to man nor beast, is it? And certainly not to the green belt. Councillor Adams, the ward councillor. <laughs> I have no problem with this at all. I think it's an improvement and I will vote for it. Thank you, members. I think we can safely move on to the uh, recommendations. Subject to conditions 1 to 2 and informed is 1 to 2, as set out on pages 79 and 80 of the report, permission be granted. Those in favour, please show. And that's unanimous 7. Thank you very much indeed. 
Moving on to item B2, WA 2016-1714, garages at uh, Whitehall Hatch, Gotland Lane, Hazemere, GU 273AW. Ryan, to introduce this one, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this application seeks perm permission for the erection of extensions and alterations to existing garages to create two dwellings. Start with the location plan. The application site is located to the south of Scotland Lane between a cluster of residential developments comprising Whitwell Down Lodge, Whitwell Hatch Cottages and Whitwell Hatch. Uh, as you can see from the aerial photograph, uh, the area is semi-rural in character with many tall mature tree plantings surrounding the site. Here we have the site photographs. The top left photograph shows the garages and workshops subject of this application. The top right photograph demonstrates the proximity of the application site to the nearest neighboring residential property of Whitwell Hatch Cottages. The bottom left photograph is of garages to the north of the application site. And the bottom right photograph demonstrates the proximity of the application site, which you can see the building there on the far right of the photograph to the neighbouring residential property of Whitwell Down Lodge there in the, in the distance. Um, the top left photograph here shows the proposed communal amenity area taken from the application site itself. The top right photograph shows the rear elevation of the existing residential property of Whitwell Hatch Cottages. Uh, and the bottom photograph shows the flats at Whitwell Hatch looking back from the proposed communal garden area. Here we have the proposed block plan which demonstrates the layout of the scheme. The, pro the proposed units one and two will be located between the residential properties of Whitwell Down Lodge and Whitwell Hatch Cottages. The parking provision of, the, of two spaces will be provided within the existing garages to the north of the application site. Just demonstrate that to the centre of the screen there. Um, and a further two spaces along the existing driveway here. The communal garden area would be located to the immediate southwest here. Uh, here we can see the proposed elevations for Unit 1 and 2. The proposed dwellings would measure 15 metres in width, 9.2 metres in depth and 7.5 metres in height to the ridge. The dwellings would have a gable end feature to the front and re rear elevations and a dual pitch dormer windows to the front and side elevations. It is proposed that the elevations would feature facing brickwork and tile hanging. The roofs of the new dwellings would have plain clay tiles and it is proposed to have painted timbered windows and doors. Here are further um, proposed elevations for units one and two. Here you can see the proposed floor plans for units one and two, which demonstrate that the proposals would meet the recommended material space standards. Um, in conclusion, the proposed development would have a limited prominence in the broader landscape and would not cause material harm to the countryside and would not fail to reserve, uh, conserve, sorry, or enhance the landscape character and natural beauty of the AOMB and AGLV. It would be acceptable in terms of design and impact on surrounding neighbours. The matters of principle and technical opinion are the principle of development, location of development, impact on trees, highways and parking, and the effects on the SBAs, financial considerations and biodiversity. The matters of judgment are the impact on the countryside beyond the green belt and impact on the landscape character and designated AOMB and AGLV design and impact on visual amenity, standard of accommodation and provision of amenity space, and impact on residential amenity. If I could draw members' attention to the update sheet and ask that they note the amendment on the final paragraph of page 86 of the agenda report. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Ryan. Members. Councillor Munn. Thank you. Could we... Yes, if we go back to the block plan, with, which is a picture, that one there. Um, no, you better make it the map now. That's too, too, too obscured. Can you go on to the previous one? That's right. Now, if I've got this right, it's the three blocks which you can see come down left there. Those existing garages and workshop, and those are being replaced. Yes, that's the correct answer. Yeah. And... You've got the dimensions of the proposed units. Can you just tell us what the dimensions of the existing buildings are 
on where are they in the report I was looking for it I couldn't readily find it Sorry, Councillor Muller, we haven't actually got a scale rule with us yet. So a can we, so, can I, we might save, save you the trouble. Um, as it's, my colleague said, I can feel the site visit coming, coming on. <laughs> Councillor Adams. I was just trying to make sense of this diagram, to be honest, because as I, looking on page 83, there's a large black line over. Is that all one holding, the large black line round the side? Is that all in the ownership of this? Yes, that's right, Councillor so, Adams. So that's what, within the blue line. So what they're trying to do is carve out a bit in the middle, are they, to to um, produce some se se separate ownership. So where would the access to the rest of it be if that was somebody else's? <laughs> right, okay. Yes. Right, okay. Just going back to the sort of service. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so just to clarify, just to clarify, um, the, if you turn to page 83 of your agenda, it shows this, this black line here is the line in the centre. That's the application site, so that is the area where development is taking place. The wider line on page 83 is the, the remainder of the ownership. Um, so the, the access to the remainder of the development would remain the same through here, through the centre of the site and to the existing car parking arrangement. Uh, it's just that they're only required to include within the red line the area where development is actually taking place. Councillor King. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, obviously, Councillor Mulliner wasn't with us. I think it was last year when we went on a site visit, wasn't it? Yeah, Louise. Um, but as a result of having had a site visit, so got a very valid point, I am extremely concerned about the proximity of the new development to the building on the left. Um, it, there's no way I can tell from any of the plans how close it is, but it seems to me to be incredibly close. Do we have any? Yes, there you go. Yes, top right hand picture. Do we know how far that actually measures? I doubt it's even 10 metres. Um, just to clarify, on this, this elevation, there are no habitable room windows that would directly face the, the property if you were concerned about um, the amenities of this particular occupier. Sorry, Chairman, that's why I was keen to know what the, I mean, it, that building is there now, and so, in the, and it's to the east, so the early morning sun won't be hitting that side of that house anyway. anyway. So, if this, if these two dwellings are no higher than that, and that's why I was keen, keen to know the answer to that question, um, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Um, and it, and do I take it that um, there will be some sort of easement for the, uh, occupy, uh, the occupants of the flat so they would still have access to the main building and the other buildings there because it looks as though the ownership um, of the main drive into Whitwell Hatch belongs to the applicant in this particular case. Yeah, the entire, the entire site, so the wider site with the blue line around it, 
on page 83, um, that is all owned by the, by the applicant. It's all the part of the development site. Um, but it's just to clarify, it's not that it would be divided up. The, the access would remain as it is at present, but that is the access that is proposed to the, to the proposed um, two units. And am I correct, looking at the uh, photograph top right, the ridge heights of the garage and the uh, house are similar? Is that correct? That's correct, yes. Councillor Adams. Um, going back to the, the wider picture, bear in mind this is all in the um, AOMB, um, I can see the main house over on the left of the, of the, on page 83 of the development site. What are all those buildings on the right of the development site? Thank you, Councillor Adams. So to the right of the development site, we have Whitwell Down Lodge, which is a building just there. Um, further down, uh, for, uh, there are, is, a, is another residential property here. And I believe it's a tennis court um, there to the north. Yes. Uh, and then another residential property um, just there. So it's a cluster of residential properties surrounding the application site. Again, that 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 is another residential property. It, the all the buildings you see on the uh, plan there are either residential properties, and then the smaller ones are garages facilitating those properties with parking spaces around them. Thank you. So effectively, if we were allowed two more houses in the middle there, that would really create quite a um, a block as far as the AOMB is concerned, isn't it? rather than leaving it all spaced out and a low density as it's supposed to be. The cottages are going where the garages are at present, aren't they? And the workshop. I mean, already yeah, there. and the workshop. <laughs> Louise? Please. Yes. I don't think members have got yeah. a picture of what this. Yeah. yeah, so it would infill the area between the, because the garages are, well, the garages are already there, um, but they would be slightly enlarged to um, create the dwellings. Officers of the view, because the site is effectively a site of surrounding residential dwellings, that whilst it would infill this area, in terms of the impact on sort of the wider landscape value of the AOMB and AGLV, it wouldn't be materially harmful to that landscape character. Councillor Round. Um, <clears throat> thank you. I just wondered if we ought to have a side visit. I appreciate Councillor King's comment that we, there's one before. Uh, I didn't go on it. I don't know if it was before this current council, perhaps. I don't think I missed any planning meetings last year. Anyway, uh, uh, many of us here have not had the benefit of a site visit. Is it in order to propose another one? Propose, certainly, or do you have a seconder? Councillor Hess? I hope we all attend. Um, we have a proposal and seconder for a site visit to uh, this particular site. Those in favour, please show. That's one, two, three, four. Those against? Three. Extensions carried.
We will have a site visit after the other one. Yeah. So please, just before we uh, finish the meeting, yeah, just make a, a comment. Uh, I have in the last few days made the leadership aware of the fact that this is a public meeting and we do represent the council in a big way. Uh, at one stage, had Carol, uh, Councillor King not attended we'd have, and uh, Councillor Adams, we would have been even uh, shorter. We would have been Corrid, but I don't think it would have been a very attractive site for the members of the public we're here to serve. So I have made a number of representations over the last few days and uh, failed. So thank you for your support, particularly, <laughs> Carol, and uh, thank you. Thank you all very much indeed. That concludes the meeting.